Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 2.05 STP and Combined Gas Law. Have your calculator, pen, and paper ready. So let's start by talking about what do we know about gases. Number one, we know they are compressible. In other words, if you have a balloon, you can squeeze it and have it take up less space. That's what compressible means. You can basically compress it. The reason for that is there is a lot of empty space between the molecules of gas. So we can squeeze the gas like a balloon to fit in a smaller place. So look at this. These green molecules are gas. That means the space in between is not air because air is, a is made up of molecules and atoms. This space in between is empty space. Okay, there is nothing there. And so because there's a lot of empty space, we can squish these gas molecules closer together. In other words, they are compressible. The second thing, gases will spread out to fill up a container. So the gases aren't going to stay at the bottom or stay up here in this corner. They're going to spread out and take up the entire container. Diffusion. So hopefully you remember this word, at least hearing it from biology class. Liquids and gases spread from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. And that just happens. It doesn't take extra energy. Just like a waterfall, it always goes from high to low. In this case, it's because of gravity. But it's a good example to remember. Now, if you've ever had a diffuser or like a scented candle in your house, you know that the gas molecules come off here and they spread out into your room and pretty soon you can smell the smelly oil or the candle all the way across the room because there's a lot of the smelly gas molecules over here and they spread out to where there's less smelly gas molecules. Diffusion. Where can you smell the cookies baking the strongest? In the kitchen or in the hallway? Well, in the kitchen because there's a higher concentration, but you can still smell them in the hall because the cookie gas is floating to fill up your whole house or the whole container. And it's going from an area of high concentration in the kitchen to an area of low concentration out in the hallway. So what do we know about gases? They are compressible and they diffuse. Go from areas of blank to blank, high to low concentration. The third thing we know, gases do not have a definite shape or volume. They spread out to fill a container. So they will take the shape of the container and they will take up however much space that container has. Know your laws. Okay, if the pressure goes up, so squeeze that balloon, what's gonna happen to your volume? If the pressure goes up, what's gonna happen to the temperature? Squeeze your hands together, what happens to the temperature? If the temperature goes up, oh, I'm at the beach, what happens to your volume? So pressure up, volume down. Pressure up, temperature up. Temperature up, volume up. Now I said blank is constant. Okay, so I mentioned this very briefly before, but I want to make sure that I say it again. If I'm changing pressure and volume, what thing am I assuming is the same? I'm assuming the temperature is the same because it's not anywhere in our math problem. All right, so if I'm changing pressure and temperature, now what do I assume is constant or stays the same? Now I assume the volume is constant because it's not part of my math equation. So if I'm changing temperature and volume, what is constant? The pressure. But we all know that in real life, usually pressure, temperature, and volume all change. Therefore, we have a combined gas law. So we have to take into account our pressure, volume, and temperature at the beginning and at the end. And it's not random. It actually comes from our previous laws. So Boyle's law, we get the PV equals PV. From Guy Lussac's law, we get the P over T, P over T. And from Charles' law, we get the V over T, V over T. So really, we just combined the three laws, hence being called the combined gas law. And this is on your cheat sheet, so make sure you're using your cheat sheet. Standard temperature and pressure. Since pressure, temperature, and volume all affect gases, scientists need a standard for experiments so everyone around the world can get the same answer. Because otherwise, if you're at the beach in San Diego, your temperature is going to be a lot different than if you're at, at Antarctica, right? So 
we need to take all that into account and have a standardized set amount of temperature and pressure. And so we use zero degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin. We also use 100 kilopascals, which is one ATM or one atmosphere of pressure, which is how much the air is pushing on you. Remember how I talked about how the air pressure is 14 PSI or pounds per square inch. So there's 14 pounds of air pushing on your eyeballs right now. That's the same as one atmosphere. That's the same as 100 kilopascals. All right, let's do a problem. You have 15.0 liters of nitrogen gas at 100 degrees Celsius and 200 kilopascals. What volume of gas will you have at STP? First thing you do in these problems, list all the numbers you know. So I have 15.0 liters, 100 degrees Celsius, 200 kilopascals. They said STP. I know my standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. My standard pressure is 100 kilopascals. So, ooh, what number do we have to convert? We have to convert our degrees Celsius, right? So we're going to take our degrees Celsius and add 273 and we get 373 Kelvin because your temperatures all have to be in Kelvin when doing the math problems. All right, so what are we solving for? Well, we're solving for the volume of the gas, okay? And now I want you to go through and say, is this P1, V1, T1, P1, V1, T2? I want you to hit pause and I want you to do that part on your own because I wanna make sure that you're practicing this. All right, so hit pause and tell me for each of these, are they V1, V2, P1, P2, T1, T2? And the answers are, this is your starting volume because it's liters, Kelvin is temperature, kilopascals is pressure, and they said that we're going to STP, so these would be our second temperatures and pressures, and we're solving for our final volume. All right, what formula are we gonna use? Well, I have two of each, so I know I'm going to use the combined gas law. So go ahead and plug in your numbers and get an answer. You can either solve for V2 right away and put it in this way, or you can put them into this equation right here, which is what I did. I took my first pressure times my first volume, divided it by my first temperature. I took my second pressure times V2, because that's what I'm solving for, divided by my second temperature, and then I cross multiplied. So I took 200 times 15 times 273, put it over here. I cross multiplied. I took 373 times 100 times V. And then I simply put them in my calculator. And then I divided both sides by 37,300 to get V by itself. And V equals 21.96 liters. So it doesn't matter if you do your algebra first or do your algebra at the end. Whatever you feel like, you get the same answer. All right, go ahead and do your pre-quiz. And let me know if you have questions after that. And then take your quiz. And if you get any wrong that you don't understand, make sure you ask me about those too.